the high maximal day is something I feel is ultimately something that you need to peak with because, again, folks, you are teaching function of the body, okay? One consideration you have to have is for sports specificity, this is uh, Ischern's, Valdemir Ischern, there's uh, books in the back there too. The aerobic capacity residual, so aerobic capacity, 30 days. Um, you can see maximal strength is right around 30 days. Now, now people have a hard time with this. And you have to realize that, again, maximal strength is, is still a skill. So people say, if I don't bench for 30 days, it goes down if I don't squat. All right, yes, your squat got, has gone down, okay? My athletes that uh, are running, let's say they're, they're also including in running, but during the course of the season, we may not back squat for a period of time, but their back squat, their back squat went down, but they did not get weaker. If you tested their muscles in some other way, the strength's still there, they just lost the skill of back squatting. So don't think that you have gotten weaker, okay? On the 30 days, you won't, you'll keep some residual. Um, aerobic glycolysis strength, maximal speed is about five days. This is the most important skill for all of sports. Maximal speed is, is the most effective thing. That's what wins, okay, wins games. And uh, you need to buy that or, or develop it, however you want to do it. And the, or recruit it. Any college coaches here, make sure you recruit fast kids. Um, improve intermuscular actions, motor control. But these are the residuals. This is one consideration you need to, to have in your training program. Now, let me give you an example. Uh, they, this is a Monday for six weeks. So this would be done, the first slot would be done one day. This is my program. This is an actual program from two years ago. Um, this is basically my program on Monday for two weeks. The next one is Monday for weeks three and four, Monday for th five and six. And essentially you can keep the same exercises and I'll give a little credit to uh, Giles Cometti, French contrast uh, researcher. This is one of the most effective methods I ever, think, ever have seen, the back squat through the hurdle hop. So basically you come through a back squat, you do a triple at 85% and people are going, you're crazy? A little bit. It's a six count down, okay? So the athletes go six count down and they can't come up. They actually have to be pulled up by their spotter. They'll do another one and then they'll do another one and it causes some potentiation. The set's 20 seconds long that day. Remember as on weeks, uh, uh, weeks five and six, as I mentioned, that was 20 seconds. And then they go through a hurdle hop. They'll do a squat jump with a little sandbag on their back for a pause because I'm still trying to work some isometric and starting strength and then they'll go back through an accelerated uh, band pause jump. And then if you follow that through, you'll see it changes. The next, after two Mondays of that, the back squats go to a isometric phase, and then they go to a concentric phase, okay? And that French contrast method, I wrote about it in my book, is one of the fastest ways, I at least take slow kids to make them, really fa make them a lot faster, okay? It does work for my track athletes. We ran across this, um, a number of years ago, especially with Adam Steele and, and uh, Mitch who ran the world's fastest time in the 400, two weeks apart on the same track team. And then the sequencing exercise, and I'm gonna get into all that, but you can see basically if... Uh, it still work if I... Yeah. Okay, is that working? Yeah. Is that working, are you sure? Okay, got it. Um, I, got I got five numbers here. You didn't give me directions. Uh, <laughs> I got uh, six numbers here. First number is the eccentric component, okay? Um, for example, right here or even up there. This one would be the uh, isometric. This is the concentric, which is always zero. This would be if we're doing clusters, so that if they do one and rest. This is the duration of the set. And this is if we're doing a bilateral training. If you do the right side, you will rest 20 seconds and do the left side. So usually they'll do one leg, let their partner go, and then they'll go. Because again, we're, if, you, if you back this up on a, on a single leg back squat and did it together, that's 40 seconds of stress the body's realizing, okay? So then I actually give them the time in between. So if you read all my, uh, uh, my works, you can differentiate. But again, everything is essentially be eccentric because all the stress that day is focusing on eccentric. This month, this two weeks, everything's isometric. Every exercise you do has an isometric component in it. And then it's all concentric. Okay, now you'll realize if I only work legs this day, the upper body will get stronger eccentrically. Okay, because you're systemically working the whole organism. It'll adapt. So if you never do eccentric work on your upper body, your bench will still get 
more reactive because of the, you're doing eccentric, because you're pushing the organism into some very high stress of the eccentric capacity. Um, again, I've kind of already talked about the biomechanics of full range versus uh, oscillatory. Again, short reactive sports, we'll do an oscillatory bench. The full range or the, uh, the duration, the long duration of running, longer running, not reactive or, or mid-distance running or swimming, we'll do a full range. Keep in mind, systemic adaptions are different than localized. Okay, so when I say that, you may have adaptions that are taking place in the legs, but the rest of the body's also adapting to some other level of, of work, which might be lighter, could be aerobic, could be alactic in the legs, but aerobic in the upper body. So there is some confusion there. Um, I haven't really thought through all those considerations yet because it, it's too, um, it takes a while to get your head wrapped around. Um, but ultimately, these are some, just some quick thoughts. Uh, you'll see in my more advanced programs, you'll see the eye position, eyes up, eyes down. Theory would be, with, with that theory, um, no, I don't know if it uh, could be proven. I think it probably could. Essentially, if you're going to pick up something, you would look up because when you look up, you actually shut your flexors off because there's always some tone in them. So I actually have my athletes look up when we're doing more extensor work. We'll look down. Keep your head position normal, neutral, um, as Charlie, uh, Charlie Weingraf has mentioned to me. And keep your head position normal, posture perfect, and then you move your eyes in the direction that, whether you're using the extensor and flexor. That's with more my advanced programming, which maybe I'll um, start another book uh, for that. But again, ultimately, so if, so if you're doing a bicep, which would be a flexor, okay, you, you will actually look toward, down to the ground towards the bicep. If you're using the same dumbbell extension, and what I feel is that the body's wanting to work the way you're telling it to work. So if you're an extending with a tricep, you would look up and away. Bicep down and towards, because you're pulling yourself that way. Bicep, tricep would be up and away. So my athletes, they read this, bench press, eyes are down, okay? Squat, eyes would be up, okay? It depends what the, what the and, and I may be working muscles that are extensors, obviously, and having different eye position, but it's the main focus point of the movement on how you position your eyes versus the, um, the, uh, the actual, some of the muscles working in there. And I, you know, basically got that off Mike, uh, a friend of mine, Mike T. Nelson. Uh, he does a lot of Z Health stuff. So a very effect, I think it's a very effective method. Some of the things I actually put in my dynamic warm up. Let me uh, rush you through some sequencing. So I have just placed this on my website, XO Athlete. And most of this stuff you won't find on my site. This is mainly for high school athletes. Uh, the, my more advanced stuff I don't have on there. The, I'll just download this. Jay, that didn't work. No. What are you going to do? Go up there and see if I can fix it. No, 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 I got it. I got it. Relax. We'll figure it out. Sit back down. Good. Where, uh, where'd you put my file? file. I'm teasing. Exercise, sequencing. Does anybody know how to search something on here? Yeah, top right. We just, oop. I use half words, it doesn't work. Oh, there we go. Oh, wrong one, that's close. <laughs> Come on, there we go. Okay. I just posted this on my website. It looks like I need to reload it, unless it's Jay's computer. So here's just basic, just basic sequencing, and I'll actually send it to Jay, and you can, you can put it on the site if you want, Jay. This is how you would take your athletes through a block. Um, everyone knows what a glute ham is, eccentric down. I won't show you that video. So then you go through isometric block. Then you go through a regular glute ham hyper. Then I'll, I, you could incline it. Then you do glute ham speed drop, so essentially you go up, drop at a high speed, stop yourself instantly. Now understand this would most likely be eight, 10 weeks of training. So you work in the high reactive stuff. And then this one I made up, I'll be honest with you. Kind of looks funny. 
but you'll find that, okay? Now, there's keys to this. Go back to the ASFM method. This athlete is pushing his quads in this position to go back this way, pushing his quads and his feet through the, the glute ham. We broke two gram, gl glute hams right now in my weight room because of that. So they push really fast, and then they'll pull themselves back with their hamstring. Got it? So you can watch it again. You should track athletes are unbelievable at this. He's actually going much slower than he can just to show him, but it's a, it's a, just a, 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 a unbelievable. And people say, ah, that exercise is not hard. The first week you do it, your hamstrings will be tore up. Now, this is more important for top end speed running and ham, hamstring work. Does that make sense? Because you're not going through the full range of motion. You apply force at top end speed, the hamstring goes right there. So this is how you periodically, let me go back, take your athlete through the sequencing of exercises through the ASFM method to get to function. Folks, your hamstring is functioning the way it does at sports if it's done at a high level once you get through this process. Again, from Doc Yesis, squatting a lot of weight when you're getting closer to your sports competition will teach your nervous system to strain and be slower. This is a method of teaching it to be fast. Your, for example, hip flexor eccentric prone is just a prone eccentric hip flexor <coughs> lift. Now, and then eventually, so we'll go, uh, let me go back to that. So you go that lift, eccentric, then an isometric, pause at the bottom, and then we'll go to the essentially contralateral. So you can see this athlete. Oh no, that's the hip flexor prone contralateral. So you can see the exercise we'll do with the eccentric component and then the contralateral, as in, uh, they named it in rehab, I would call it a cross-sectional pull or something else. But, but again, what happens in running? You pause it, the hand, this, this leg is, is slammed backwards and the pull comes diagonal across the body and there's a counterbalance from the upper body. So again, notice he's on one leg and he'll be doing, he's on one arm and he'll be doing the, the uh, contralateral with the other leg because what happens if, if they looked at 100 meter runners with no arms, what happened when they go down the track, they, they wobble, why? Because there's no offset of balance with their arm so when their leg slams back. And then, so, so then the contralateral prone would lead into the hip flexor or the, uh, the OC. Basically same contralateral exercise the next week and he's working his hip flexor. Now one of the biggest thing I got from Dr. Yesis is, you know many people work the hip flexors in front. You're, the, the hip flexors work in the posterior part of the body when they run. The hip flexors in sports work in the posterior part of the body. Why are we training them in the front, okay? So, and this is, uh, you know what, I don't like the band pulls because it's very hard to teach the right technique as yeses um, to a, a, a room full of athletes. I, I have went to this, uh, gotten results, but this is the most effective um, way and I get to the, and then there's other ways, sequencing, but all these sequences will be on my website loaded up. If not, if I can't get them in Excel, I'll put them in a PDF. Um, let me keep rolling through here. How to do, again, this is a sequencing of how to put everything in block. So my board, uh, the sport back squat that I got from Dr. Yesis, essentially do a, a narrow stance. You can do, an, I'll show you the first one and then we'll show you the last one. And you can sequence through. So essentially, with an eccentric countdown, you kind of get it. I probably didn't need to show it to you, but just in case. More narrow stance. And then you could always go to the, ASFM method where they pull themselves down with a, with a light weight. You would actually want, wouldn't want that part of that, the second one's probably better. Second one's by far better, there you go. So, and again folks, just because you stop back squatting six weeks after your basic strength phase, you'll still be strong for another two. This will make you more sports specific, okay? And the, the back squat, sports back squat is more sports specific because you bring your feet underneath you. So I, I do squat with a wider stance and then I bring them back in when I want to peak my athletes. So you can take a look at all this, different components. Um, let's make sure. 
accelerated band jumps. Here's one. There's, there's a sequencing of six plyometric exercises where we actually hook the bands to the ceiling of the weight room, essentially. He'll come down, he'll pause, he'll do one, then he'll pause. And then we take it to where it's highly reactive. Again, I don't, I don't need to show you all this.